say something about the variety show, April the 13th? We're asking that you save that date, April 13th. We're going to have our First United Methodist Church variety show. That's a Saturday evening. It'll start at 7 p.m. We're inviting all of you to get involved, all ages. We, uh, if Even if somebody wants to read a poem, say a verse, we hope that the children get involved as well as um, up through adults. And those of you, there's at least some of this because I don't have a talent. But I know that there are many talented people that crochet and woodwork and things. So we're also going to have tables in the back to display that sort of thing. And of course, we'll make cookies. So those of you that uh, are bakers, uh, you'll get to share your talent in that way. So put that on your calendar, April 13th, 7 p.m. And, and then there will be more information upcoming in the newsletter and the bulletin. And if you have any questions, see Karen Capper or me. Thank you. Thank you. The Lenten Breakfast Series is 7 o'clock a.m. Wednesday morning at the UCC Church. Everybody's welcome and invited to participate. The Lenten Luncheons are at the Presbyterian Church on Thursdays at 12 p.m. my community. There is a speaker and a couple of things that happen. Let me ask other, that's all I need to say. Are there any other things that we need to share with ourselves this morning? Or check your, check your calendars on the back of your Any other announcements? Please. Well, make it uh, tonight at 12, 5 o'clock. We have a well service or contemporary worship. Of course, many of you know that. Then, following that, immediately, uh, we will be having a carrying dinner. We invite all of you to attend the well and come to the fellowship and get the time to eat tonight. Okay, thank you. Other announcements? Well, then you can see my our next item in the bulletin is that we have today is the day that we celebrate the Monday and Kaiser Award. We choose the last Sunday of February and half of X number of years. And so I'm going to turn this over to John and the committee of Pam and, and Debbie for them to take care of the rest of the week. Today we are proud to present the 23rd annual Mondina Kaiser Award. After his wife's death in 1986, Mr. B.D. Kaiser established a trust fund to honor her memory and to fund this annual award. The recipient chosen for this award must be a woman with high moral standards who has a strong love of children and a background of caring for fellow citizens in her church. She will receive an honor certificate, the altar flowers, and a monetary award based on the interest from the Memorial Fund. In selecting this year's honoree, we kept saying, she does it because it needs doing. She and her husband have lived in Plymouth for almost 20 years, raising two children here. When her children were younger, she served on the Education Commission and planned and taught junior and senior high Sunday school, vacation Bible school, and Midweek Miracles, our Wednesday night program. The children of Midweek Miracles performed musicals for about nine years, and she served in many capacities over that time period, from, from providing food for meals, helping corral the preschoolers, working on costumes and props, and helping with overall productions, such as Play Ball, The Secret of My Success, and the Bible tells me so show. If her children were involved, she was there helping in whatever way was needed. If you have something that needs doing, our recipient knows how to get things done. She is hardworking, faithful, and generous with her time. She has frequently taken upon herself to clean out and organize church kitchen, storage areas, and classrooms around our facilities because it needs doing. As her children reached their teen years, she served on youth council and helped with confirmation classes. Many, many classes of graduating seniors have enjoyed her French toast casserole at the breakfast to honor high school students on their graduation. When her daughter wasn't asked, she chaperoned a work trip for hurricane cleanup. She served as our church's representative to the Adam Street Ministries Board 
meeting monthly, helping plan curriculum for the ASK youth group, and organize the Blueberry Stomp, which is the chief fundraiser for ASK. She also served as our church's youth director. Our honoree has served on staff parish, organizing farewell receptions for departing pastors and welcome picnics for new pastors and their families. Like many ladies of our church, she has furnished food for funeral dinners and used her lunch hour from work to help serve the meal. She is always ready with a smile and her sense of humor. She is not afraid to take on a big project, bringing enthusiasm, a sense of humor, caring, and a commitment to do whatever it takes to get the job done. She served on the committee that planned events to celebrate our church's 175th anniversary. She was a main coordinator for two very large benefits, for the Pickett family after Matt's illness and the Carmine family during Helen Karen's illness and death. This quote from William Penn seems to exemplify today's honored lady. I expect to pass through life but once. If, therefore, there can be any kindness I can show or any good thing I can do for a fellow being, let me do it now, and do not defer or neglect it, as I shall not pass this way again. Even though her children are grown now, she is helping with children's Sunday school once again, because it needs doing. Recently, our honoree has discovered two new passions. Her first new grandbaby arrived. Her other passion is Hello Gorgeous which provides makeovers to women suffering from cancer. She speaks to groups, spreading the word about Hush Gorgeous, and works on fundraising. And when it's time to honor a special woman with a makeover, she spends a lot of time and energy on each individual to make sure each woman feels special, beautiful, and loved. Today, we are proud to honor Marilyn Rams.
extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your heavens are like the very deep. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Thy feast are the abundance of your house. You is the fountain of life. In your life, you see life. Let us all join together in singing, I am thine, O Lord.
Okay, the next song that we're going to sing is not in your cubicles. It's a uh, one of our addendum songs that we, we about five or six years ago in conference sent out this wonderful package of songs that are not in our hymn hymnal. And we by the virtue of technology we're able to present it to you today. So it'd be kind enough just to sing on the one. Yeah? 
Well, I want to challenge you this week because sometimes it's not darkness that we feel like we need help with. Sometimes maybe it's our homework or cleaning our room or maybe there's a, a friend that you're not getting along with. Okay? But if you'll hang in there and pray and just take one step at a time, God will help you through. I promise. Okay? Will you pray with me? God, we thank you that you have given us your word to, to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And I thank you for these amazing children seated here before me, Father. And I just ask your blessing upon them, that you would help them through the challenges they may face in this upcoming week. Let them know how much you love them and care for them and are always, always there for them when they need you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all the kids said, Amen. Thank you. I am God, your God. Every wild animal of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the air and all that moves in the field is mine. Let us now receive the morning on.
that our ownership is neither absolute nor eternal. Amen. No, If you would be kind enough to stand up for me on the back page of your bulletin and find our scripture lesson, or you may read it on the screen. This is the fulfillment of the promise that God gave to Abraham. You may remember that when Abraham, when God first promised Abraham he had a son of his own, Abraham was about 75 years old. From then until the reading now, there's been a passing of 25 years. Abraham is 100. Sarah is 90. Now, what you and I think are impossible, God sees his probabilities. Read with me, please, as we find this to be the inspired word of God. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord,
will be your heir. Some of you 
you don't, may not know that there is a town in Indiana called Aurora. It's down on the Ohio River. I thought maybe was going to tell me I should never go back there again, but that's not what this is. This is the fear of the northern lights. Anybody got that? I don't know. That was a whole Calophobia. Phobia. The fear of obscure meaning.
uncertainty that comes into just, just downright worry and fearfulness that comes into your heart. And it's not unreasonable in today's world. Some of you, for instance, have been saving for your retirement. You know that Social Security is not what it once was, and it's not going to provide you enough income to last you the rest of your life. So you have been saving, and you have been invested. But the rates on the money market in the last few years have been almost non-existent. The stock market, all you have to do is read the paper, it, it, it just fluctuates so wildly, and it's, it's, you can't make any sense of it. The value of your home equity has took a tremendous hit in the last four or five years, and maybe it's not come back to where it's on the positive side of the ledger even yet. How will you ever keep up with the pace of inflation in today's world? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? There are these fears, these founded fears that come into our life. Uh, the loss of a loved one, uh, the loss of a child, uh, outliving new resources, for instance. What of Abraham's fearfulness was that he and his wife Sarah were childless. I have served in churches where it has been a heartache for certain individuals and certain couples. It is a very difficult human situation to go through at any time in anybody's history. But for the people of the ancient world, being childless was a particularly difficult situation. You may remember that in these days when Abraham was there, this is an agrarian society, probably 80 to 90 percent of the people live off the land. Children are needed in this society to help gather the crops, to help tend the animals. Children carry on the family lineage. They, they are the preservers of the family inheritance. Not having children in those days, people were feeling very vulnerable. In their old days, they got nobody to look after them. And by the way, it fell to the oldest female child to take care of mom and dad when they became elderly. If you're childless, there's no one to look after your funeral arrangements. There is no heir, H-E-I-R, in your particular family. And it weighed heavily on Abraham and Sarah. Some of you know that pain. Now, of course, if you have children, that is a different kind of weight that has its own way. One man was having his tax forms prepared. The tax preparer said, how many dependents do you have? And he said, eight. Slightly hard of hearing, the tax preparer said, would you mind repeating that? And the man said, not if I can help it. <laughs> Children are a great source of joy. They are also a cause of some sleepless nights if you have ever had teenagers in like Abraham was fearful that he had no children. And there are several in this room that can relate regardless of your age. Now, I, I think that you would agree with me that everyone in this room knows what it is like to be afraid. It's different for you than it is for me. We are wired differently. Things that I have a phobia about, it doesn't bother you at all. Things that you have a phobia about, doesn't bother me. But this is a society in which we have a lot of anxiety. And it has been defined as the official emotion of our age. And it could be an awful emotion. The word anxiety itself uh, comes from the Greek word ananke, which means a tightening of the throat or to press together. The German word for it is angst, which, is a, which means to strangle. The French word, Latin word, is agre, which means to choke, and for those of you living in America, you know what angina is. Well, angina is a medical term that causes a tightening sensation in the chest. Fear is an absolutely universal emotion. It began with Adam and Eve, and it has extended all the way down to us and all the way around the globe. I don't know of anybody that does not have some kind of fear, some kind of phobia in their particular life. And of course, some people have more fear than others. Mother Teresa likes to tell the story that she found a little frail child uh, who was starving. The little girl could not remember the last time she ate it, so Mother Teresa took this child off to the side and said, eat, my child. Give him a piece of bread and some, and some water. Yeah. Said, this will nourish you. 
And the child responded by saying, I cannot eat it, for if I do, I will only become hungry. Once again. Now, compared to that child that lives in India, most of our troubles are inconsequential, aren't they? Most of our fears are overblown. Most of us will not have our homes taken away from us. Most of us will not know what it's like to be homeless. Most of us will not contract some kind of deadly disease that will kill us. And most of us will never starve in this world today. Knowledge is a powerful antidote to fear. But knowledge can only take us so far in our journey. I only know of two ways that we might be able to overcome any kind of fear in our life. And the first one is this, just to face up to your fears. Just to face up to it. That's what researchers have, are beginning to develop in the, in the world today, is to help people deal with their phobias and their fears. And they call it exposure therapy. And they very carefully and very slowly expose you to that very fear to which you have the most angst. Helping people to overcome the fears in their life. The problem is, most people that have fears and phobias won't go get help. Most people try to, avoid, to prefer to avoid their fears and happen to awaken that, that fear in them. Psychologically, what we, are, we are wired to fight or flight. And so that's our two options. When we see something that terrifies us or threatens us, the first thing we want to do is either run from it or fight it. Now most of us in the world today will try the avoidance program, try to go around it, not let it be a part of it. There are very few of us who stand and fight. You ever known someone who was afraid to go to the doctor because they feared that they really were sick and if they went to the doctor he would just confirm it? And so they didn't go. How counterproductive. Get to the doctor's office. Just as soon as you came, you may not be nearly as sick as you thought you were, but if you are, then begin treatment. Running away from your fears is a terrible way to cope with them. The second is this, fall back on your faith. The Lord God came to Abraham in a vision and said, do not be afraid. I am your shield and your very great reward. Abraham says to God, but you know, 25 years ago you promised me a kid and I don't have one yet. God takes Abraham outside and says, look up in the night sky. And if you can, count those stars. And that will be the number of your descendants. Now the, the writer of the Genesis record goes on to say something that we probably gloss over way too quickly because it records Abraham as saying, Abraham believed in the Lord. He's a hundred years old, she's ninety, and he believes he will be given an heir. Question, do you believe beyond our five senses? Do you trust what the Lord has for us? One of my favorite United Methodist pastors who happens to live in Indianapolis uh, goes, to, goes regularly to clergy meetings and he was sharing with us once about how another minister who lived in the, in the city of Indianapolis but in a very dangerous portion of town and his friend, the second pastor, was always amazed that a certain woman who was a member of his church uh, seemed to have no fear of coming to meetings at night, and she never drove. She always walked from her apartment to the church and returned home the same way. She walked through a dangerous area, terrifying streets where she lived. One night after a prayer service at which the same woman had been present, the minister was locking up the doors to the church, and he happened to notice that she was walking down the street toward her apartment, and she had her hand held up. Kind of an odd way to walk down an uncertain street. Isn't it? So the next time he saw her, he said, Mabel, what were you doing? You looked like you had your hand out. You were holding the hand of an unseen companion. And she said this, 
As I walk, I am humming a familiar tune. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. Every time she left that church, she was scared. Certainly she was. Did she let her fears defeat her? Oh, absolutely not. She fell back on her faith, those old stories, those old hymns, those old words of assurance that she kept falling back on because she trusted the Lord would protect her. Was she really afraid? Absolutely. Perhaps she looked up in that night sky and saw all those same stars that Abraham saw. It's a good song. We'll sing it one of these weeks pretty soon. As we walk through life, precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me home. Would you bow with me for a moment? Thank you for the blessedness that you give to all of us and each of us. We thank you for the assurance that things happen to us when we least plan them. They become a fearful enough to cause us physical pain and anxiety. If we know that you are with us, you have always promised you would be with us. We should take your hand and have you lead us home. We thank you for our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you be kind enough to stand with me if you want to turn to the hymn that's in page number 451? I'd like you to be able to read that song. Jesus Christ our Lord. And these people said, Amen. God is good. All the time.